They think it's all over. It is now. No, I'm not talking about the football. Barring an outrageous scandal, Liz Truss, like England's victorious women's football captain Leah Williamson, has one hand on the trophy. Truss is now within her rights to pop to John Lewis and measure up for curtains at number 10. Although she may want to go for the budget option and pop to Ikea instead. Because financial caution is going to be the theme of her premiership. She's been compared to the Iron Lady Margaret Thatcher in a comparison she has willingly encouraged if these photographs are anything to go by. Here's Thatcher in the tank and here is Truss. Anything you can do, I can do better. Here is Thatcher again. And here's Truss. Well, you've got to stay warm in winter. And how about this, Thatcher? With uh, what's called a pussy bow. I think we can, we lose that strap for a second. Let's have a look at that, uh, that blouse with a big fancy bow on it. Okay, and then here is Truss. Uncanny. I've got to say, I feel naked without my pussy bow. And there are parallels between the two women. Fair-haired, attractive, assiduous, no-nonsense public servants from normal, unglamorous middle-class backgrounds, and both educated in state schools. And as with Margaret Thatcher in 1979, Liz Truss will inherit an economic crisis as PM. Whilst we have mercifully low unemployment, as in 79, economic growth is through the floor, Inflation is rampant and the unions are once again holding the country to ransom. The free market loving tax uh, aficionado, the woman that always wanted taxes low, Margaret Thatcher, began her first few years in power very cautiously and with a laser like focus on inflation, the stealth tax that hurts everyone. So for Liz Truss, it's the economy, stupid. And tackling inflation is the only show in town. Thatcher did this by controlling public spending and raising interest rates. People and businesses suffered, but that painful, bad-tasting medicine paved the way for our astonishing economic recovery. By 1987, Britain was a global economic, military and diplomatic powerhouse. This was achieved through courage, conviction and tough choices. No pain, no gain. Liz Truss has said a lot of things that people want to hear. Tax cuts, tough border controls, a rethink of the Northern Ireland Protocol. And she won't grant that pint-sized bully Nicola Sturgeon a second referendum on independence. Muck Brexit will not happen on Liz Truss's watch. She'll move heaven and hell to exploit the colossal trade, tax and strategic opportunities that Brexit offers. Work she's already done as trade secretary with all those amazing trade deals. She'll have no trouble defining what a woman is. She is one after all and will hopefully take some inspiration from my new political hero, Kemi Badenoch. Badenoch, by the way, very much deserves a massive job in Truss's cabinet. Liz Truss can make herself the first anti-woke prime minister of the United Kingdom, tackling the toxic political correctness and bonkers ideas like critical race theory and trans ideology, which have so disgracefully infiltrated our institutions, corporations and the media. It may seem like a fringe issue at the moment, but things like cancel culture, the policing of free speech and biological men invading female only spaces is beginning to affect everyone's lives. Parents are dealing with tearful daughters coming home from school who haven't used the loo all day long because it's unisex and there are boys in there. And women don't take kindly to being called cis women or birthing humans. If you called that to my mother, she'd give you a slap. Calling out this woke bullshit will, I guarantee you, sustain trust in power for many years to come. Helped along by this man. Keir Starmer is the man who campaigned for Britain hating Jeremy Corbyn to become prime minister, who tried to reverse Brexit and who, with his inability to say what a woman is, is what I would call a vagina denier. Don't take my word for it. He can't bring himself to say only women have a cervix, demonstrating that he's got no backbone and a group supporting women's sex-based rights called Labour Women's Declaration has been refused to stand at this year's Labour Party conference. Here's the brilliant journalist Sonia Soda drawing attention to this travesty in today's Observer. 
Funny that, isn't it? Labour want to erase women whilst the Tory party are about to make yet another one prime minister. Which is why I disagree with many commentators. If trust builds a platform based on common sense and traditional conservative values, not only will she win support from disgruntled Tory voters, I think she can hoover up millions of votes from Labour supporters too. Don't forget it was Margaret Thatcher who stormed to three landslide victories on the back not of Middle England Tory voters, whose support was a given, but millions of working class, previously Labour supporting Brits, who loved the Iron Lady's vision of aspiration and opportunity for all. Buy the council house or the council flat that you live in. Start a business and make a better life for you and your family. What's not to like? My advice to Liz Truss when she gets the keys to number 10, which looks inevitable, can be summed up in three words. Be more Thatcher. Flawed though Thatcher was, she made mistakes, she could be heartless, and she certainly lost the plot towards the end as she isolated herself in an ideological bunker over the poll tax and Europe. But aside from Winston Churchill, she was the most important and effective British politician of the 20th century. Why? Because for most of her tenure, she was willing to deliver tough, painful policies to get the economy in shape and to reinvent and rehabilitate British society, its culture and its institutions. She was straight with the British people about what needed to be done and she never indulged in spin. She was authentic, she had a vision and she was a fiscal and social conservative. Low tax, small state, family values. And a stunning victory over the Falkland Islands, which was in the balance for a while, demonstrated two of the qualities we need to see in Prime Minister Truss. Patriotism and balls of steel. But notwithstanding the positive policy ideas that have come from the Truss camp, she mustn't indulge in the snake oil of sound bites. Truss's campaign has been an unapologetically populist one. But there's no point having great slogans without great delivery. Less is more. In the spirit of Margaret Thatcher, say what you're going to do and then get on and do it. Whether it was Blair, Cameron or, dare I say it, at times Boris, a sexy headline has all too often failed to be backed up by properly executed policies that actually improve people's lives. So forget about the opinion polls and the newspaper front pages. Thatcher never cared about that. She took pride in being at times wildly unpopular. Her skin was thicker than a Love Island contestant. But her commitment to her political vision earned her three stunning back-to-back -back election victories. And a country transformed from the bankrupt lazy man of Europe permanently on strike to the fifth biggest economy on God's earth. You didn't have to like her. You had to respect her and you had to believe her. So Prime Minister Liz Truss will have many problems in her inbox from day one. A war in the East, an energy crisis and arguably the biggest economic emergency since the Second World War. But it's a colossal opportunity as well. She's got two years and just shy of an 80 seat majority, courtesy of Boris, to actually get some things done. Prime Minister Truss can't fix everything in two years, but as with Thatcher in the early 80s, she can set Britain on a path to recovery. She can unite the nation. She can shrink the state. She can begin to balance the books. She can get the economy growing again. She can start urgent NHS reforms. She can get serious about crime. She can restore British values to our public institutions. And she can defeat the toxic, divisive scourge of hard left wokeism. Barring a disaster for her campaign, she's now got a two-year job interview with the British people. If she gets it right, her preferred design of curtains will be hanging at the windows of number 10 for a long time to come.